Okay. Today we have gathered for online session our topic probiotics. Role in human health and possible role in COVID 19 like infection by Dr. S. D. Pathankar sir, President Maharashtra Unit Microbiology Society. Before moving towards this session, Professor Mabudu Rahman, Assistant Professor in the Department of Engineering, AKM College of Medicine, Nasir. Today, we are here to welcome our honorable guest, Dr. S. P. Patankar Sir, on the behalf of our AKM College of Medicine. We welcome to Dr. B. L. P. S. Sir, who is working on the campus of AKM College of Medicine and Medicine and Medicine. We also welcome to Professor Hindi Devadekar, Principal of Ekiwa College of Agriculture, Professor Hardwadekar, Principal of Ekiwa College of Agriculture, Professor Hardwadekar, Principal of Agri-Biotechnology, Professor Sandhan, Principal of Ekiwa College of Agriculture, Professor Ekiwakar, Principal of Ekiwa College of Agriculture, Principal Dr. Akewa College of Agri and Business Management and all principal of all institutes and staff members. We also welcome to all staff, students, participants, and farmers who attend our session. Now, I would like to call Principal Professor N. Deosate, sir. To get brief information of Education Society. So, sir, please come. Thank you, sir. Master Professor Your College of Food Education Society Nasi. Next. Nashi Karmavirika Lead Kaku Shik Honorable Sri Bala Saif Vak. KK Vak Education Was established in established the leader. He realized the importance of and started a so no more. A small planted by Karmavi big tree with 36 for about 20 years to engage in studies from KG to PhD. I was a very good person. 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 In various for 1000. Working hard towards developing the world class institute or plus alumni members spread across the center of KKVAG Education Society. Next. So these are the institutes run by our. We have central office, farm, transport, and as well as hostels. About 20,000 plus students in our country. About 1,827 staff society. Next, please. 
So these are the milestone. Milestone. That is near college, outside Nazar, started in 1970. Kiva College of Polytechnics. This is Nasi. It is started in 10 years. Part the need of the agriculture education. The first agriculture institute which is Then KKWA College started in 2006. After that, recently KKWA College of uh, they all of you so technology. A YouTube channel, online assignments, using the e resource, which is the online examination software is used by the staff, by the faculty, smartphone, gate practice software, used by our faculty. Please. Major recruiter of KKMAG Education Society, uh, then ABB, uh, then WNS, Bosch. These are the major recruiters of our. Under KKWA Education Society, and that one, one uh, aluminum bit of KKWA Education College, and DC, USA on 14 May 2016. Then again, USA on 2016. Uh, Engineering College also conducted the aluminum bit at Texas. Uh, the aluminum bit of students under the KKWA Education Society was cut today on 14 2017. One student under the KKWA Education Society was cut in 2019. Next, please. So the college, college Nasty, then KKW Polytechnic College Sargeri, and KKW College of Pharmacy, uh, uh, which is located at Sargeri. It is a student. Next, please. Uh, we have nursing college started in 2008. We have college of fine arts started in 2007. Next, please. This will be the you know the education. Uh, so all the six agriculture and allied colleges, these are under one roof in the campus. This is these are KKMA College of Agriculture. 2003, we College of Agriculture in 2005. Technology started in 2008. We College of Food Technology in 2009. We College of Agriculture Business Management started in 2011. 
and KK was College of Photo These are the CT activities conducted under the education system. First section, these are under this competition. Then KK Matala is also started. Then Sarbabir competition. For public uh, for example, Dr. Girish Mahadev Inkar Gaikwad. Many more eminent speakers we have invited for the public lecture series. Then take a society star with Yogi and star they are nominated person in the social media. star they are nominated for the person in the agriculture. And we have also conducted the program like a Level, then we have a program like POB and the the various industries for round table in the industry. Then, sign project for the student. Next, thank you very much uh, for listening to uh, this presentation. Thank you, sir, for giving the information of KKWAB Education Society. Professor CS Food Chemistry and Nutrition Department to give brief of KKWAB College of Agri. Thank you very much, sir. Myself, uh, CS Nirali from uh, Food Chemistry and Nutrition Department, KKWAB College of Food Technology. I am pleased to introduce our college, uh, Kikewa Agriculture and Allied Colleges. Next, please. Kikewa Agriculture and Allied College. There are six colleges in total. Each college is established, uh, opened in different years. For example, Agriculture, Engineering, and Technology started in the year 2004 with the intake of 80. Kikewa College of Agriculture in the year 2005 with intake of 120. Kikewa College of Agriculture Biotechnology with intake of uh, in 2008 uh, with intake of 80. Kikewa College of Food Technology in 2009 with intake of 80. Kikewa College of Agri Business Management in 2011 with intake of 40. And Kikewa College of Horticulture thirteen with intake of 40. In total, 440 uh, years, uh, students per year we will be giving education. Next to slide, please. Salient features, if you see, the trusted education organization with the 50 years of continuous quality education in diversified field of education. 
that is we are taking from kg to pg six branches of her courses of agricultural education under one roof innovative teaching learning process on the infrastructure facilities that is with a well equipped laboratories we are having affiliated to mahatma bade krishi vidyapeeth rahuri highly motivated and self dedicated faculty members placement and career development facility for the students the library rich with all types of books journals periodicals e learning setup with opac library manager and koha software system of expert talk advisory committee and educational visits we conduct facility of experiential learning modules uh, like uh, fruit and vegetable processing bakery and construction and technology cereal processing are being implemented to help students to become entrepreneurs next please these are the different uh, uh, platforms where the uh, students learn practically soil and water cleaning the nursery management mass production of bio agent and bio pesticides bio fertilizer production protected cultivation animal farm next dr kp vishwanatha vice chancellor mpk rahuri delivering lecture in krushi udyog sangam which was conducted uh, on 21 to 22nd september 2017 in collaboration with the cii it was a conference com exhibition organized by our ktwag and allied colleges sme academic and industry meet happened on 30th november 2019 next laboratory facilities if we see we are having kekeva college of food technology having food processing technology food engineering food chemistry and nutrition food microbiology and safety food business management food plant operations computer laboratory we are having uh, well equipped equipped laboratories uh, uh, for performing the practicals practical orientation learning will be possible at our labs next please students profile if you see 100% seats are filled since 2014 last 6 years uh, uh, we are getting 100% seats uh, get filling highest cut off than any other private non aided institute of food technology we can say till date uh, 286 uh, students uh, were graduated among them 178 boys and 108 girls are there from starting to till date the um, rate of uh, passing a uh, rate of uh, coming in first class and the distinction is increasing you can see the chart next please student achievements if you see these are the extra curricular activities of the students of okay keva college of food technology coming to academic excellence uh, mr pratimesh pawale 2019 20 received best agriculture student award research competition mr akshay gaude participated in avishkar 2019 at kv rahuri nss uh, under nss mr jay pake 2018-19 received best nss volunteer award by mpkv rahuri under sports category mr aditya gore received award for maharashtra state fencing championship in conferences and posters mr aditya durkar winner in paper as well as post presentation uh, 2017 18 19 continuously in music uh, mr jay pake participated in utkarsha 2018 winner from mpkv rahuri next please miss gore aditi arti uh, second year won gold medal in kho kho at venkateshwara veterinary university tirupati andhra pradesh on 1st to 5th march 2020 just to be put to lockdown next please well qualified are experienced and dedicated faculties our strength of faculty teaching staff of 15 people uh, non teaching 26 total 41 our staff uh, publications uh, such as popular articles 110 research papers 45 number of conference or seminar attended till date 70 membership of professional society 6 number of net qualified staff next please next please
इंटरेक्शन ऑफ फैकल्टी विथ आउटसाइड ओनली टीचिंग एट कॉलेज एक्सपर्ट फ्रॉम डिफरेंट फील्ड लाइक अकेडमिक्स एज वेल एज इंडस्ट्रीज विल बी इन्वाइटेड सिक्सटी टॉक्स वर अरेज ड्यूरिंग लास्ट थ्री इयर्स टाइम industrial visits uh, industrial visits during last 3 years were arranged to get practical knowledge to students like uh, cftr mysore vocal diary kolapur coca cola pirangut etc likewise 41 visits uh, happened uh, last 3 years in front training of students from last 3 years 261 students uh, 178 students were completed their in front training during last 3 years in various industries like uh, General Mills India Private Limited, Maligao, MIDC, Sulawani Arts Private Limited, Gangapur Gao, Nashik, Kellogg India Limited, Mumbai etc. Likewise, uh, students get uh, exposed to industries uh, experience also. Coming to alumni, alumni of KK Technology, Sujit Babble, 2014 batch. He is working as vice chairman at Thomson Foods Private Limited, Pimple Nair, Bengaluru, Nashik. Sushar Kulkarni, 2012 batch, pursuing Emerson Mundus Joint Master's degree in Food Innovation and Product Design from France. Vishal Choudhary, 2010 batch, student, uh, regional credit manager at uh, Bharat Financial Inclusion Limited, Indus Indian Bank, Hyderabad. Omkar Sawant, 2013 batch, working as a product development executive at IDC Bangalore. Neha Solanki, 2012 batch, are currently working as police sub inspector at Chandrapur. Ashok Falke, 2010 batch, owner at Falke Farms, Chikuchi Wadi. Next to Vibo Thora, 2014 batch, is a Sanjeevani Oil Industries Pune. Abhijit Ahe, 2013 batch, working as a Packaging Development Executive at Vista Foods Private Limited, Mumbai. Sheikh Mukta, 2015 batch, OC Oat Mill, Sri Lanka. Dharanjay Vak, working as Quality Officer at Five Star Dehydration Kaloja, Gujarat. Abhay Valanj, MBA in Global Business with the Entrepreneurship at Coventry University, London Campus. Ketan Choudhury, Manager, Big Basket, Bangalore. Next, please. Our actions are our future. Uh, gold medal winner of state and national level fencing competition. As a quote, uh, I can say, be a good technologist. Let's join the hands together to do commitment to eradicate worldwide hunger for lifetime. Thank you very much uh, for the organizers to giving me this opportunity of introduction of our college. Thank you very much. Call Professor S L Vidya to introduce today's chief guest. Thank you, sir. At Nagpur, uh, sir, speaking experience worked as a senior in capacities lecturer. Eighty-six to two thousand fourteen at Guru Nanak College of Science, Ballarpur District, Chandrapur. Hello, and the administrator as a principal. college uh, india from 2014 to 2019 uh, sir research project microbial production of glucose oxidation uh, glucose in acid product uh, fortification of tribal food in micro nutrient by fermentation and microbiology and bio uh, of asa asa was sir has published 20 research papers at national and international sir also in different of microbiology and biotechnology sir also published two books from lambert academy publication appreciation in national institute and and the
are accessed from their important activity action center. Uh, the linkages of the sir developed of spirulina on dicalcium phosphate. Now, consultancy for establishment of biofertilizer plant and soil testing laboratory at Sir also government an expert on Vidarbha development of the Three birds. So work as an academic counselor, RTM Nagpur University. Member Board of Studies Microbiology. University Member Board Board hmm. interested in my oh, oh. show your screen. Uh, uh, sir, active participant oh. in Jackie's work as a chapter president, Ballar. Oh. City Jackies, local chapter trainer for Jack 2000 conducted training from career counseling sale of college and district Chandrapur organized interview for marketing position in pharma companies. The search for popular counseling as make your future. Careers in life science, careers in microbiology, careers in bio. Hello. Ah. Thank you, sir. Ah, Mala, I am here to phone call on Sangeet Lamy, sir. Ba. Thank you, ma'am, uh, for giving the introduction of our today's moving towards our session. I would like like for today's chief guest, Dr. S. D. Patankar, sir, to deliver today's interesting seminar. So, sir, please. Oh, okay. Thank you. Hello. Hello, sir. Ah, hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are audible, sir. Audible. Okay. Yes, sir. My screen is. Uh, can you can you see my yes. screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Screen is visible. Yes, sir. Is it clear? Hello. Sir, uh, uh, this time. Nay, this time. Now? Ha, ah, yes, sir. Is one. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so, shall I start now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I want to move this screen. Sir, full screen karu shakta sir. Khali te aro sa hai na? Ah. Ah. If you click over there, full screen width will be. Ah. 
now is it is it visible no sir, no, sir. again screen no. gone sir. no 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 screen sharing ha ah, it is there visible yes sir. yes visible okay okay <clears throat> so i am very much thankful to you for inviting me for this uh, uh, yeah, webinar uh, i am very much happy that uh, such a big institution uh, that, that you have invited me for uh, today's webinar thank you for uh, my lucid in, uh, introduction uh, very good afternoon to all of you uh, today's uh, good afternoon uh, principal of the college and all other dignitaries without wasting much more time i am uh, proceeding with my lecture so today's topic it is on uh, probiotics in human health and possible role in covid 19 like infection so uh, here the probiotics uh, and role in human health and possible role in covid like infection so it is very customary to see what is probiotics now the probiotics all of you know you must have heard about the probiotics probiotics uh, all of uh, many of you might be knowing uh, the antibiotics antibiotic they are against of the microorganism this is the probiotics that is what the organisms they are giving what beneficial effect and they are giving the helpful to our human health now what is this probiotics exactly and how it plays an important role or how it could play a role in health and what will be its it a possible role in uh, infections so let us see let us start with the uh, probiotics now this probiotics uh, all of you must be knowing that <clears throat> uh this is what this famous picture of this famous scientist all of you might be knowing he is eli metchnikov eli metchnikov he is the uh, oh, he is the nobel prize winner of russia and uh, uh, he is the father of modern immunology and eli metchnikov actually he while studying or while uh, working on the immunology he found that the certain type of uh, bacteria they may give what they may give uh, effect on what on the fouling of stomach at that time it was called as the fouling of stomach and he said that this fouling of stomach can be prevented by use of certain type of lactic bacteria and then it is what the uh, conceptualization of probiotics it is naturally going to uh eli metchnikov so the concept of uh, probiotics it was given by eli metchnikov in 1907 uh, he proposed that acid producing bacteria in the fermented milk could prevent the fouling in the large intestine and if it consumed regularly lead to a longer and healthier life so this was a very nice type of the concept it was given and it was the observation of eli metchnikov Uh, so after that, what happened? Then the uh, Shirota, 1930s, Minoru Shirota from Japan, he developed the fermented milk, and that is called as the Yakult. All of you might be knowing, many of you might be knowing the Yakult product. So it is prepared from the Lactobacillus cassis Shirota. So it is the in it. It was the isolated organism by Shirota. That's why a strain it was named as the Lactobacillus cassis Shirota. after that in 1965 the term probiotic it was coined by lilly and stillwell and then after that nearly about in 1970s the exact definition it was given by fuller so uh, probiotics it is nothing but what it is a live microbial feed supplement which beneficially affect the host animal by improving its intestinal microbial balance now here <clears throat> it is what it is the microbial feed supplement and which beneficially affect what the animal host how it is affecting the host beneficially by improvising its intestinal microbial balance so all of you might be knowing that intestine our intestine it has got a certain type of the microbiota now if we look that from where we get this microbiota 
a newborn or when we born from where we are getting this microbiota because we are not exposed we are we are not exposed out uh, to the outer world but still initially at the start of life some microbiota is there and this microbiota it is contributed by whom and how it uh, uh, it is affected by different factors so a newborn microbiota it is what it is initially it depend on what it depend on the mother's microbiota the maternal vaginal and intestinal flora that constitute the source of bacteria which colonizes in the intestine of newborn so we receive our intestinal microflora from our mother and again it depend on what it depend on there are various factors it depend on mode of delivery whether the delivery it is given by uh, natural way or it is by the cesarean or like that so by that modes also the microflora of intestine it is undergoing what undergoing a change then after that the birth environment birth environment that is what is the environment which is present in which environment birth has taken and there are rarely the genetic factors and after that this uh, flora it undergo a change because different type of the foods raw foods they are introduced sometimes the milk and then the other type of the products like the yogurt cheese they are also given so because of that they the flora of our intestine then go on changing similarly there are various other physiological changes they are also occurring so because of that also because of the start of secretion of different hormones and so many other thing there is a always a change in what there is a change in the physiology and the internal environment of our body and because of that also the microbiota going on a change and that's why as the microbiota change nowadays it has been given that your microbiota which is present in the intestine it will govern your health it will govern your psychological health also and it it, it also govern what it also govern the other type of the activities also so the microbiota of intestine it is very very important and then this probiotic play an important role in what in balancing what the microbiota of the intestine so what are these probiotics they are doing how the microbiota it is balanced and then what are the different type of activities which are given by the probiotic and what are their interactions with what with the uh, body tissue physiology immunology and so many other thing so it become what it become a complex type of relationship of the microbiota and then the our uh, physiology metabolism and so on and in that the probiotic it gives its contribution so now what are the factors that are affecting the intestinal microbial ecosystem so that is what that is very important now these are the certain factors like antibiotics other drug intake so when we take the antibiotic if it is a broad spectrum antibiotic then it is going to destroy many more type of organism then because of that the microbiota undergo a change then microbial infections if the infection is there then again also the microbiota change then depending on your health depending on your diet whether it is highly processed low fiber food or whether it is with fiber or whether it is highly proteinaceous whether it contain more lactose whether it contain the different type non digestible starches and so many other thing so depending on that also your microbiota changes or it gives the different type of the interaction then the chronic diarrhea if there is a chronic diarrhea also because of that the microbiota undergo a change or there is a imbalance in what in the microbiota of your intestine so stress stress now this is very very important nowadays the stress people are uh, facing much more stress and because of stress what happen there is a there, there is what there is a change in the secretion or formation of different hormones enzymes they are correlated so as it changes naturally the metabolism physiology also changes and depending on that also the uh, microbiota also go on changing because the possible type of nutrients which are available for the flourishing in the intestine that will go on changing so stress how much you are stressed how much you are relaxed <coughs> depending on that also the microbiota undergo a change then the chlorinated water consumption of chlorinated water that also contribute 
then radiation and chemotherapy if a person is on, on, under the radiation and chemotherapy your microbiota of intestine go on changing then colonic therapies and detoxification so there are some time we take different type of the detoxification type of the treatments and because of that also some microbiota may be lost or sometime a new microbiota may be introduced so this is these are what these are the different factors which are affecting the intestinal micro ecosystem now the probiotics so when we call when we say that probiotics it is nothing but a feed a feed supplement which is there now this feed supplement it is a microbial feed supplement which is taken and then it gives what it gives different type of effect so which particular type of the microorganism to be designated as what or which culture to be designated as a probiotic it must qualify certain type of the qualities and these are what these are the able it must be able to survive the passage of digestive system right from mouth to intestine there are different stages for example in the mouth the ph is different the biochemical activity is different when it reaches to stomach the acidity it is much more so because of that again the organism must survive and then it must reach to the intestine because intestine is the destination where the uh, organism must colonize and must give the proper type of the uh, proliferation now it it must have ability to attach to the intestinal epithelia and colonize there because what happen the bad bacteria also there what is the uh, what is uh, <clears throat> what is the mechanism of pathogen in the intestine or of the enteric pathogen first of all they give the anchoring on your epithelial uh, lining of the intestine now probiotic bacteria also must have a greater ability to give the anchoring on what on your epithelial cells in the or epithelial lining in the intestine and then they can colonize very well so that there will be no place for anchoring of the bad organism or the pathogenic organism so naturally the uh, probiotic organisms must have this ability then it must be able to maintain the good viability they must have the ability to um, take the nutrient and multiply it in a faster rate then able to utilize the nutrients and substance from normal diet so whatever the normal diet which we are taking from there the nutrients must be available and those nutrients must be taken up by the organism they must be non pathogenic and non toxic capable of exerting beneficial effect on the host then stability of desired characteristic during processing storage because uh, the probiotic organisms they are used in different type of the food products for development of different food products so naturally they must have a characteristic of sustaining what sustaining all those processes storage and the transportation systems then it must be anti inflammatory it must be anti mutagenic and it must be immuno stimulatory these three characteristic must be there then and then only the uh, beneficiary effects they can be uh, they can be realized and they can be taken uh, from the host so now this is what this is the uh, proposed health benefits which are starting from probiotics it is a summary now probiotics these organisms they give what they give the immunomodulation balance the immune response strengthen the innate immunity they alleviate the food allergy then after that they normalize the intestinal microbial composition or microbiota comp composition because of what because of their activities and due to that they control what the in inflammatory bowel diseases because many more organisms like uh, s type and uh, different type of the uh, enteric pathogen they give the inflammation in what in our intestine and because of that the pathological condition occur then control of irritable bowel syndrome then after that colonization resistance suppression of endogenous pathogens example antibiotic associated diarrhea now this is what they whenever we take the uh, broad spectrum antibiotic the indigenous pathogen indigenous organisms or the normal microflora it undergo uh, destruction and then what happen the commensalic organism which are present or the endogenous like e coli it gives what 
it gives their appearance it gives their activity and then they start a diarrhea and other type of the thing so it is because of what it is because of the broad spectrum antibiotic this destroy the normal flora and then what happened then there is what there is another flora it developed which gives what which gives the effect that is called as the antibiotic associated diarrhea then it gives the suppression of what exogenous pathogens travelers diarrhea that is also important then on the metabolic effect side what is the metabolic effect it produces what it produces the short chain fatty acid that is scfa and vitamins like folic acid and then because of that they give what they give the reduction in risk factors of colon cancer so uh, how this happened that we'll see in the uh, further slides then after that it gives what it it lowers down the level of toxigenic and mutagenic reactions in the gut then it gives the lactose hydrolysis so because of that uh, all of you might be knowing that there are certain type of the people a certain type of the person who are what who are not having the uh, tolerance toward the lactose so they they are what they are lactose intolerant that is what when they consume the milk the milk cannot be digested and uh, it gives the indigestion problem because of what because they cannot hydrolyze the lactose so this lactose hydrolysis it is given by the probiotic organism if the probiotic flora is there then it will give what it will give the lactose hydrolysis and then it will help for the digestion of the milk then it also gives what the bile salt deconjunction and secretion it act on certain type of what certain type of the enzymes uh, for example a certain type of the enzyme it lower down the certain type of the product formations for example hydroxymethyl glucarate glutarate and all other thing which gives what which give the deconjugate conjugation of what of the bile salt and then because of that the cholesterol levels they are reduced so this is a major problem nowadays the higher colic hypercholesterolic levels are observed now it is a better thing that if you consume the probiotic food then in that case the uh, cholesterol level can be reduced so these are what these are the certain type of what certain type of the effects of uh, probiotic culture in a summarized manner now what are the advantages the probiotic culture they produce lactic acid lower the ph uh, of intestine inhibiting the bacterial uh, pathogens such as the clostridia salmonella shigella e coli etc then they decrease what the production of variety of toxigenic toxic and carcinogenic metabolites now what happen when we take certain type of the things or certain components of the food now they are what they are called as the pro carcinogenic initially they are not the carcinogenic but they are the precursors of carcinogenic metabolite when they are ingested when they go into the system after that they are acted upon by certain type of the enzymes which are present in our system or the enzymes which are produced by what produced by the organisms which are initially present in our system for example the e coli and all other type of the organism and then they convert the pro carcinogen into carcinogen so because of that the colon cancer and other things they may increase so here what happen the probiotic culture they reduce this particular type of the possibility because they are acting against what against these type of the enzymes or these type of the processes which convert the pro carcinogenic into the carcinogenic metabolite then after that they <clears throat> aid in the absorption of minerals especially calcium due to what due to increase intestinal acidity so calcium absorption it is a problem if the calcium it react with the acid then it is a salt and it can be easily absorbed then it gives the production of beta d galactosidase enzyme which breaks down the lactose and the lactose intolerance can be uh, controlled then they produce different type of antimicrobial substances like acidophilin bactericin which inhibit the pathogenic bacteria then also they produce very important thing is that they produce vitamin b and vitamin k now <clears throat> vitamin b and vitamin k they are produced in a natural way in the intestine and they that's why they can be easily absorbed so that is the main advantage of probiotic then also they act as what the barriers to prevent 
harmful bacteria from colonizing in the intestine because they have a better colonizing capacity with what with the in intestinal epithelial tissue so because of that what happened there is a competition between what between the pathogenic bacteria and the probiotic bacteria the probiotic bacteria if they are present in the larger number they win and then they do not allow the anchoring of what anchoring of pathogenic bacteria to the intestine these are the certain things that the colon cancer the probiotic bacteria like lactobacillus bulgaricus may help to prevent the colon cancer by preventing the breakdown of enzyme that is called as the beta glucuronidase now beta glucuronidase that contribute to the growth of cancer causing agent now how it happen that we will see then lowering of cholesterol that is lacto lactic acid bacteria break down the bile in the gut thus inhibiting the reabsorption which enters in the blood as cholesterol so this is what this is a very important thing then reduction in the blood pressure consumption of milk fermented with variety of strains of uh, uh, lacto, uh, lactic acid bacteria may result in what in the modest reduction of the blood pressure due to what due to the ace that is angiotensin converting and then inhibition like peptides produced during the fermentation now how they it forms how it occur that we will see in the next uh, future slides now anti uh, antibiotic associated diarrhea that is aad results from an imbalance in the colonic microbiota probiotic treatment can reduce incidence of and the severity of the aad that is antibiotic associated diarrhea efficacy of probiotic <clears throat> aad prevention is dependent on what on the probiotic strain that is the uh, used and what is the dose of those particular strain so that is what that is there so many more time when we take the antibiotic lab broad spectrum antibiotic doctor also prescribe one particular type of the sachet that is called as a lactobacil it is a sachet which contain the freeze dried uh, culture of what of the lactobacillus porogenes it is nothing but what it is nothing but the probiotic when it is taken it produce the vitamins and all other things and because of that we are uh, protected from antibiotic associated diarrhea then allergy treatment of allergy what happen there are certain type of the enteral antigens that is what which are present in the enteric region now these antigens they may cause what they may cause certain type of the allergic reaction so they are modified they are modified their structures are modified by what by these uh, probiotic organisms then normalization of the properties of aberrant indigenous microbiota and the gut barrier functions then the regulation of secretion of inflammatory mediators and promoting development of the immune system particularly it inhibit what it doesn't allow the formation of ige antibodies which participate in what in the hypersensitive reactions prevents <clears throat> the allergy by promoting endogenous barrier mechanism and alleviating intestinal inflammation now here it gives what <clears throat> it gives the formation of the iga type of the antibody which act as an antibody pest so it induces the production of what production of ig iga probiotic organism they produce certain metabolites which gives the induction to the immune system because of which it gives what it gives the production of what the production of iga antibodies and those iga antibodies they give what they give the protection against what against the different type of what inflammations then reduction of t helper cells to cytokine response so this is very very important now this cytokine response if the cytokine response the t helper cells cytokine response if it is aggravated then in that case it will cause a damage to the cell or damage to the tissue itself so it gives the reduction of t helper cell cytokine response thereby it is it is protecting from our own Uh, cytokine which is developed in a aggravated manner so because of that we face a problem for many more times so in this way it helps in the treating treating of allergy also now these are the probiotic strains which are commonly used lactobacillus acidophilus lactobacillus plantarum lactobacillus cassii subspecies rhamnosus lactobacillus brevis 
lactobacillus is delubrica then bifidobacterium bifidobacterium adolescentis then bifidobacterium bifidium bifidobacterium longum longum then bifidobacterium infantis and bifidobacterium brevi apart from that there are other type of the bacteria like streptococci lactobacillus lactis species lactobacillus cremoris then apart from that there are certain type of this uh, yeasts are also they are acting as a probiotic there is the pediococcus and then the saccharomyces uh, bulgaridae so these are what these are the uh, various type of the organisms which are available so intestinal microflora location and prevalence it is rare in esophagus uncommon very uncommon in stomach there are 10 to the power 5 cfus in what in the jejunum primarily they are on aerobes 10 to power to 10 raised to power 10 to 10 raised to power 12 in the colon primarily anaerobes and more than 1000 they are anaerobes and aerobes they are found which are present in the intestinal microflora so this is what this is the uh, prevalence of microorganisms type of microorganism in different parts of what different parts of our uh, digestive system now probiotic consumption minimum consumption of 100 gram of probiotic food with 10 to the power 7 cfu per gram it is sufficient most probiotics do not permanently adhere in the intestine but exert their effects as they metabolize and grow during what during their passage through into the intestine so that's why as they are not permanently adhering so daily consumption of bacteria is needed and that's why it is the effective way that you must have a certain type of what a probiotic food which must be included in your diet so that it will maintain the population of probiotic organism in your intestine and it will maintain the microbial balance in what in the intestine giving what giving a good type of the health so the daily consumption of these bacteria in one or some other form it is essential so these are what these are the certain probiotic foods so this is the yogurt which is turkish in origin available in different different forms and flavors low fat chocolate yogurt drink fruit flavored goat yogurt neon colored yogurt uh, in squeezed tubs and so many other things this is the frozen yogurt which is there after that uh, the uh, food juice uh, the fruit juice uh, the uh, type of the yogurt it is there so a good belly uh, a company which produce what organic fruit juice based probiotic beverage which contain l plantarum and had the effect of irritable bowel syndrome so these are what these are the different products now this is what the attune foods which produce the chocolates probiotic chocolates and granola bars so these are what this is one these are these are the thing this is the very famous food the yakult dairy milk drink it is a probiotic culture dairy beverage beverage has a citrus flavor sold in a single shot so you can take at least one shot every day and it contain what it contain the lactobacillus cassis shirota strain which is produced by the scientist shirota now this is the ricera rice yogurt it is a rice yogurt which contain what which contain the whole grain which contain the active culture uh, cultures of lactobacillus bulgaricus streptococcus thermophilus lactobacillus acidophilus and bifidobacterium bifidum so this is what this is the ricera yogurt ricera rice yogurt it is a mixture of what it is a mixture of rice and the organism which gives what which gives the ricera rice now for military consumption also the probiotic capsules such as they are also available they are available in the chewable tablets they are available in the sticks and so many other things now we must consume this probiotic as a food so it is instead of taking as a sachet or instead of taking as a uh, chocolate or other thing we can use as a part of our food so it gives what it gives a synergistic effect between components of food and the probiotic cultures so component of foods 
they are giving what they are good effect they help the growth of probiotic organism and maintain apart from that the natural buffering that also occur in the stomach acid by food so because of that it enhances the stability of consumed probiotics so the protection from the acidic condition in the stomach it is provided when we consume this as a food or along with the food now dairy products containing probiotics provide a number of high quality nutrients including calcium protein bioactive peptides sphingolipids then conjugated linoleic acids and so many other things so all these type of what all these type of the quality nutrients which are available and that's why the probiotic culture also develop apart from that when the probiotic culture grow in the dairy product it produce all these type that is the bioactive peptides sphingolipids and linoleic acid protein calcium etc absorption of calcium it is also better when we take the uh, probiotic along with the food now incorporating foods containing probiotics into daily food choice can become a lifestyle habit so if you can make it a lifestyle habit then it will give what it will give a good type of what a good type of the uh, habit as such and it will uh, protect your health now there are rare cases the side effects of probiotics are seen now what are, it gives what it gives the bloating diarrhea or abdominal pain if in excess it causes infection that require medical attention people having uh, underlying disease or compromised immune system may cause the potential health problem like skin rash fever body stool bloody stools etc so those who are with compromised immune system may face a problem sometimes interact with immunosuppressive drugs leading toward life threatening conditions so people taking such drugs should avoid it so immunosuppressors where they are given so they should not consume such type of what such type of the uh, product or they must uh, consume the probiotic with precaution now here we are consuming it along with the food and then nowadays the two terms they are very commonly used that is what that is the functional food and the nutraceutical now when we say the probiotic can be used along with the food or it can be a part of food then can we call this probiotic as functional food or a nutraceutical so here we have to see first of all what is functional food or what is nutraceutical so nutraceutical it is a term which is coined from nutrition and pharmaceuticals the term nutraceutical is often interchanged with functional foods but it is not like that there is a slight difference between the two nutraceuticals are nothing but naturally derived bioactive compounds compound dietary supplements and herbal products and have the health promoting disease preventing or medicinal products so they are what they are dietary supplement bioactive compound and high herbal products and have a health promoting disease preventing medicinal products whereas the functional foods are what which contain an ingredient that gives that food health promoting properties so when the food is there it contains such type of the organism or such type of the component which will give what which gives the health promoting properties over and above its nutritional value so apart from its nutritional value it provides certain certain thing in addition for example it may give you protection against certain type of the disease or it may give a certain type of the intervention in your metabolic system which will be beneficial to you it will initiate what a certain type of the process inside your cell so because of that yeah, or it will induce a certain type of immune system or immune uh, response so that gives what that gives the functional food so a functional food it is what it contain such type of the component which will give the health promoting properties apart from the nutritional value and it is nothing but a food nutraceutical not necessarily be the food but it is what it is a bioactive compound which is derived which is derived from some dietary supplements 
it is a dietary supplement for example you know the spirulina the spirulina is a nutraceutical we are giving it as what as a dietary supplement herbal products are there nowadays there are so many herbal products that are available for example as the corona is going on so many people they are giving different different type of the uh, herbal preparations you can call them as a nutraceutical because they are giving the medicinal products as such but functional foods they are the basically the foods but some component in that they are giving the health promoting properties above and over of the nutritional value example is providing yogurt etc now food or a part of food or nutrient that provides the health benefit including the prevention and the treatment of disease now it may be plant animal and microorganism source nutraceutical agent it may be vitamin mineral protein probiotics fatty acid amino acid major ingredients formulations such as powders pills tablet capsule bar food and drinks now here this is the classification of nutraceutical you can see this classification there are two parts one is what the dietary supplement and other is the functional food and beverages in the dietary supplement we can have the different vitamins and minerals herbal products they are the ayurvedic extracts algae extracts plant extract or even they are the certain type like the algae then protein supplements like protein powder and then the probiotic and others so in nutraceuticals the probiotics are there for example when you go and when you take the lactobacillus sachet so that become what that become the nutraceutical now coming to the functional food and beverages functional food it contain the probiotic fortified products omega fatty acid fortified product protein bars now in this case the probiotic fortified products it include what it include the yakult then it is the yogurt now these are what these are the functional foods so they are doing also the similar type of the job but they are consumed as a food even if we prepare a curd from the lactobacillus casei and other type of the standard type of the culture then it can be what it can be the functional food so even curd is what is a functional food then functional beverages are there energy drinks sport drinks and fortified juices so this is what so <clears throat> from this classification one thing is clear that nutraceutical also include the probiotic and the functional foods also include the probiotic so probiotic comes in both the categories that is what in the nutraceutical as well as the functional foods so no mechanism of probiotics <clears throat> how this mechanism occur how this probiotic help the health or help the human health so there are basic four ways production of antimicrobial substance competition for nutrients with pathogen competition for adhesion of receptors stimulating the immunity so this can be summarized like this so here the production of antimicrobial compounds then there is what there is a production of growth substance substances like vitamins vitamin entire range of vitamin b1 b2 folic acid b12 now b12 it is what it is generally available from the animal source but probiotic cultures they provide what they provide the vitamin b12 so vegetarian people they do not get the vitamin b12 unless and until they consume the non vegetarian product but here there is an alternative arrangement that the probiotic cultures they produce what they produce good amount of vitamin b12 so vegetarian people can get their requirement for vitamin b12 from probiotics then there is a competition competitive exclusion then after that the <clears throat> modulation of immune system what they do they produce what they produce certain metabolites which go inside what inside the epithelial lining and then they Uh, uh they induce the dendritic cells the dendritic cells differentiate they produce what they produce the <clears throat> t cells b cells now generally the b cells which are present which are produced in what in the b cells which are produced generally uh, in intestinal cell uh, lining they give what they give the production of what the production of 
the antibodies and they are nothing but the IgA antibodies. Then another response is there. They produce the Th1, Th1 cells and then they are also producing what? The interleukin 10. So these are what both the type of the immune responses are there. That is the T cell mediated or the cell mediated immune responses and then the antibody mediated immune responses. So they produce what? They produce also the beta defensin like product and because of that they form a layer. So they enhance the barrier function, modulation of immune system, then production of what? The growth substances, then reduction in the luminal pH. So because of what? Because of the, because of that, the <clears throat> different problems they are uh, covered. Then competition for nutrients. So these are what? These are the probiotic bacteria. And then they are competing for what? They are competing for the nutrient. So they are having uh, fast utilization of nutrient than that or that of what? The pathogenic organism. So pathogenic organism is eliminated. So this is what? This is the role of probiotics in management of intestinal dysbiosis. So now beneficial effect among the human being. Non-infectious dysbacteriosis after high doses of antibiotic or after the radiation therapy. So that is one. Then health promotion overall, inhibition of carcinogenesis, anti-cholesterolic effect. That is what they reduce the cholesterol, high calcium resorption, destruction in anti-nutritional factors. That is ANFs, vitamin synthesis, riboflavin. Vitamin B12, folic acid, pyridoxine, and niacin, and the protein predigestion. So these are what these are the various beneficial effect among the human being. They have been seen. Now possible mechanism for beneficial effect. They improve the protein metabolism. How? Now protein absorption. It is sometimes a problem. So what they do? The probiotic culture. They produce the phosphoprotein phosphatase activity, which helps in the absorption of milk protein. Then improved vitamin metabolism, they produce vitamin B complex like B1, B2, B12, folic acid, B6 in build dosage. Now see, instead of taking the vitamin B complex pills or the capsules or whatever it may be, instead of that, if we take the inbuilt vitamin dose, it is more effective than our oral administration and the therapeutic preparation. So we must take such type of the cultures or such type of the food which contain what which contain the probiotic organism and then this will benefit us because in a natural form these vitamins are available as such then prevention of constipation because the organic acids are produced the probiotic culture so they give what they increases the intestinal peristalsis so those who are suffering from the constipation they increase the intestinal peristalsis so because of that the normal bowel movement is observed then antibiotic action Probiotic culture produce inhibitory effect against E. coli, S. aureus, Shigella <coughs> uh, dysentery, S. typhi, Salmonella typhi, Proteus vulgaris, Candida albicans, and these are what the bifidin, Nisin, these are what they have been isolated from Bifidobacterium and Lactobacillus species respectively. Then the treatment of liver damage, probiotic uh, preparations help in treatment of patient of hepatitis and cirrhosis. How? Generally, what happened? The blood ammonia level increases. Now it decreases the blood ammonia level. Phenolic compound and urinary indicant it decreases by metabolizing it. So that is what that is the good effect of probiotic and control the liver damage. After that, the colon cancer. Now colon cancer. In the colon cancer, what happened? Generally, we take a certain type of substances, certain type of the components in our diet. They act as a pro-carcinogen. Basically, they are inactive carcinogens, but when they reach the intestine, the, intest the uh, intestine contain different type of enzyme like beta-glucuronidase, nitroreductase, azoreductase, glycolic acid hydrolase. Now, <coughs> what they do? They, they are coming from where? They are coming from either from the natural flora, which is present like E. coli, which is present. It also produces the beta-glucuronidase, nitroreductase. And what they do, they act on these pro-carcinogens. Now, these pro-carcinogens, they reduce what the nitro groups, glucorin, uh, they give the glucorinase activity, thereby releasing certain type of the groups, 
and because of that the carcinogen pro carcinogen become the carcinogen and it gives what it gives a problem so here the role of probiotic culture is there the probiotic cultures they inhibit this glucuronidase nitro reductase and azo reductase as such so they they produce certain type of the bioactive compounds these bioactive compound are the inhibitors of what the glucuronidase so the inhibitors are produced by the probiotic culture it is well documented fact that they are producing what inhibitory substances against these enzyme so the pro carcinogens cannot be converted to carcinogens then uh, improvement of host immune system earlier also i told you that <clears throat> they initiate the production of iga in the last diagram i have shown that they produce what they produce certain metabolite which go inside what in, inside the lumen and then in the in the dendritic cells which are present they are present in what they are present in the lymphatic systems there they give what they give the initiation of what the production of iga and this iga molecule when it forms it come to the epithelial surface and gives what it gives a paste like type of the covering so our <coughs> intestinal epithelium it can be protected now lactic cultures have shown the immunomodulatory effect the effect of ingested lactic bacteria start in gut associated lymphoidal tissue they can increase the serum igg levels also now lowering of cholesterol levels lactic culture reduce the serum cholesterol they produce the hydroxymethyl glutarate which inhibits the cholesterol synthesis now this hydroxymethyl glutarate it is what now in the cholesterol synthesis there is one enzyme which act that is what hydroxymethyl uh, hydroxymethyl coa reductase now that enzyme it is what it is inhibited and that's why there is what there is a uh, cholesterol synthesis it get inhibited so because of that the cholesterol levels they are brought to lower level now these are the different type of the cultures which are present required now here what happened we, we are talking about the probiotic organism now when we say the organism organism require a certain type of the condition it it has got a certain requirement it has got a nutritional requirement is it has got an environmental requirement if it is available then they can grow now that condition must be available even though if we take the probiotic culture along with our diet then there must be what there must be a situation there must be what there must be a condition there must be a food or there must be nutrient for probiotic to flourish inside what inside your uh, inside your intestine so what is that condition what type of the food this probiotic culture they need generally they need what they need a certain type of the food that is called as what that is called as a non digestible food now this non digestible food is a characteristic food or non digestible nutrient which is present in our intestine if it is present in our intestine then and then only the probiotic culture can develop so there is a pre requirement there is a pre requisite that to grow the probiotic in the intestine to colonize it in the intestine there must be what there must be a certain type of the food ingredient or the nutrient ingredient which may be made available to the organism and that pre requirement condition it gives what it gives a concept that is called as the prebiotics so what is prebiotics a prebiotics is a non digestible food ingredient that beneficially affect the host by selectively stimulating <coughs> the growth and or activity of one or limited number of bacteria in the colon and thus improves health of the host so to grow the probiotic organism inside what inside the intestine there is a requirement of such type of the component which will help the growth of probiotic so that particular component it is called as the prebiotic so what is this prebiotic now qualities required for food ingredients to become prebiotics it must be neither hydrolyzed nor absorbed in the upper part of the gi tract that is the gastrointestinal tract so it should not be hydrolyzed for example when we take the starch it is hydrolyzed in what in our saliva so starch type substance it is not a prebiotic or such type of all substances they are not the prebiotic so it should not be hydrolyzed in the upper part it must be a selective substrate 
for what for one or limited number of beneficial or commensal microorganisms which are present which are stimulated to grow and metabolically activated so it must be like that what it must favor only what the growth of the probiotic organism because of that the metabolic activity of probiotic organism can be maintained consequently be able to alter now what happens when such type of the food is available which is selectively <clears throat> taken up by what the probiotic organism and not by other what will happen the other bad colonic flora it will be removed and only the probiotic organism can be can be established so induce the luminal or systemic effect that are beneficial to the host now keep in mind now these are called as the non digestible foods so these non digestible foods there are different type of non digestible foods we take in our diet but all non digestible foods are not the prebiotics but necessarily the prebiotics must be a non digestible food so we will see the example of prebiotics so some non digestible foods which are not prebiotic they are called as the colonic foods so here now this is the resistant starch it is a colonic food but it is not a prebiotic it is a non digestible but it is not a prebiotic a non starch it is again colonic food no prebiotic hemicellulose yes it is a colonic food but it is not a prebiotic food because it is not helping the pre probiotic organism pectin pectin it is a colonic food but again it is not helping the prebiotic uh, it is not helping the probiotic growth then it is what inulin inulin chemically it is what it is the di fructose so inulin it is what it is a colonic food as well as it is a prebiotic then galacto oligosaccharide colonic food is there and there is a chance that it may be a prebiotic not necessarily it is not proved till date so we can say from this chart the inulin that is the di fructose it is what it is the only the prebiotic as such so here the sources of inulin what are the sources of inulin it is the onion then chicory asparagus banana rye jerusalem artichoke and dandelion they are what they are containing the inulin in abundant amount and if we take them along with the probiotic uh, culture or in mixture what will happen the probiotic culture will grow more rapidly and it will give what it will give a proper type of the effect so we are combining here the probiotic and the prebiotic and this condition it is nothing but it gives another concept that is called as the symbiotics so symbiotics it is what it is defined as a mixture of probiotic and the prebiotic that beneficially affect the host by improving the survival and implantation of live microbial dietary supplement in the gi tract by selectively stimulating the growth and or by activating the metabolism of one or a limited number of health promoting bacteria and thus improving the host welfare so it is what it is a symbiotic this is called as the symbiotic so it is a prebiotic and probiotic that gives the beneficial effect that allows the growth of probiotic selectively allows the growth of probiotic inhibiting the others not allowing the others activating and metabolize activating the metabolism of only probiotic organism and thereby promoting the uh, promoting the health of the consumer or that is the host or the human being so such type of the combination it is called as the symbiotic approach so to grow the probiotic to establish the probiotic necessarily it must have a prebiotic so to establish the probiotic it is not merely easy that if you if you will take the bare uh, culture that is the lactobacillus culture it will not simply get established but it requires what it requires the particular nutrient that is a prebiotic and then we can make a make a blend of what of the prebiotic and the probiotic in a proper way so that will give what that will give the symbiotics so the symbiotics it is what it is a important type of what the uh, field of study today which is available 
in the field of probiotics. Now, what are the applications of probiotics in human health? The symbiotic in com combating symbiotic approach in combating the micronutrient deficiencies, then as a cosmetical and as a preventive measure in COVID-19 like infections. So we will see this one by one. Now, the symbiotic approach, all of you know, what is it? Now, <coughs> symbiotic approach in combating the micronutrient deficiencies. Now, we, we have to see what are the micronutrient and the macronutrient. And then we have to go to the concept of what the nutrition and the malnutrition. So, all of you know, the nutrition or diet, it is correlated always with the health and the survival of the human being. It is considered from Vedic period, the rulers, were concerned to achieve the food security of their deprived population, but condition of lack of availability of food or good health persists even in what in the 21st century, which gives what which gives a general clinical condition that is called as malnutrition. Nowadays, it is generally characterized by anemic condition and low BMI, that is body mass index. Now, this malnutrition. For many more time, we come across this term, the malnutrition. Now, malnutrition, it is because of two reasons. One, it is what? Because of the macronutrients. For example, their clinical features like marasmus and quashiorka in protein energy metabol in protein energy malnutrition. So the protein, when it is deficient, energy is deficient. So we call it the pain, protein energy malnutrition and other. It is because of what? It is because of the lack of micronutrients. Now, the carbohydrate, protein, fats, they are the macronutrients. Whereas the another part, it is the macronutrients, micronutrients, which include the vitamins and trace minerals. So the lack of micronutrients like vitamins, for example, the vitamin uh, B12, folic acid, B2, then vitamin A, vitamin D. So these are what? The, these are the various type of what the micronutrients they are uh, giving the problem. Now what happened? Even though we take what we take the macronutrients in sufficient amount, it gives the feeling of the fulfillment of our appetite. We feel that we are not hungry, we are full. But what happened? The micronutrients as they are deficient, the absorption of what the absorption of this macronutrient is not properly occurring and that gives what that again gives a deficiency that gives the lowering of energy levels lowering then weakness a general weakness and there are certain type of what certain type of the conditions for example if the vitamin a is not there then impairment of vision and other type of the things are there or the population become what more susceptible to what more susceptible to the different type of the infections. So these um, micronutrients, they play an important role in giving what the proper functioning of immune system. So even though if you are taking the good amount of protein, carbohydrate and fat, and you are not taking the micronutrients properly, then your immune system will go will going to, uh, to hamper. It will decrease your health. There will be no proper absorption. Now, this is happening because the micronutrient deficiencies are there and this is called as the hidden hunger. You are not hungry by the feeling, but you are hungry because of what? Because of the malabsorption of macronutrients. This is because of what? This is because of lack of micronutrient. This is called as the hidden hunger. Now, this hidden hunger, it is common in what? It is common in poor people as well as in the affluent people because of what because of the different type of the lifestyles and habits as such so the now we have come over the macronutrient deficiencies we have recovered from the macronutrient deficiencies like pain and kwashiorkar and marasmus but the micronutrient deficiencies are still going on now this micronutrient deficiencies they are much more now there are repeated surveys they have been done by national nutrition monitoring bureau nnmb national institute of nutrition icmr in nine states of india this they have found that 
the cereal pulse based indian diets are qualitatively deficient in micronutrients particularly iron calcium vitamin a riboflavin flavin folic acid etc causes the hidden hunger due to low intake so this is because of what the people they are not consuming the green leafy vegetables and fruits and foods of animal origin now what are the consequences of this micronutrient deficiencies now there are very big consequences are there apart from human suffering due to morbidity and mor morbidity the malnutrition in general and micronutrient deficiencies in particular have a high cost economic cost now these losses are very large the productivity losses due to poor nutrition are estimated to be more than 10% of lifetime earnings for an individual and 2 to 3% of the gdp to the nation so this is very very big economic loss the cost of treating the malnutrition is 27 times more than investment required for its prevention now where we find this uh, micronutrient deficiencies now micronutrient deficiencies are present in uh, educated people non educated people poor families and also in the affluent families in case of the affluent families we can tell them that you take this uh, micronutrient they can understand but what happened in the tribal population where they consume only one type of the food and now they they suffer from different type of the diseases and different type of what the micronutrient deficiencies particularly what these cases are found in maharashtra for example in the vidarbha region there is what there is the uh, meghat region where the micronutrient deficiencies are there then in the nandurbar region in uh, nearby dhue uh, district they they are found to be present then in garchiroli district the madia tribes they are also suffering from the same problem and apart from that in many more tribal po pockets the similar type of the situation it has been observed and also available in the affluent people so uh, now we applied <coughs> this thin biotic concept to fortify a stable uh, a, st a staple of madia tribes garchiroli called ambil for b complex vitamin now uh, uh, in the garchiroli district of maharashtra there is what there is one tribe there is what is a madia tribe they are in the primitive condition and they consume one rice and jowar fermented product only without which without uh, uh, apart from that they are not consuming now it is a fermented product no doubt but it is an uncontrolled fermentation it doesn't give the use of any type of the specified type of the culture it is a raw fermentation and this ambil we took over took the uh, different type of what samples uh, food samples there is the ambil sample uh, over the garchiroli district and uh, nearly about more than uh, 200 to 250 samples we have collected at the same time we collected or we carried out one particular type of the survey that is what that is the bmi and the hemoglobin percentage we found that their bmi is low their hemoglobin percentage is also low then we analyzed this ambil for their proximate composition that is uh, protein carbohydrate uh, fats energy and then the trace minerals and vitamin b complex according to what according to the standards icmr standards and other thing then we calculated the what are the deficiencies icmr they have given the recommended dietary allowance for a normal person we calculated them we asked the question to uh, tribals how much they are consuming and from that we calculated that how much amount of a particular type of vitamin they are consuming so uh, in a summary i can show you this now rda it is given for niacin folic acid b12 b2 iron sodium uh, potassium and calcium so rda that is the recommended dietary allowance of icmr it is available now we have calculated the intake per day of those tribes so you can find here the deficiencies we have calculated it is for niacin they are deficient by 95.6 percent folic acid 98 percent vitamin b12 62.8 percent b2 99.8 
iron all are deficient now what we did we prepared we isolated the lactic cultures including what including the lactobacilli so we have carried out the uh, new uh, their uh, food chemistry also we have gone for the microbial analysis of the umbil and from there indigenously we isolated leuconostoc mesenteroides bacillus cumulus and there are lactobacilli lactic cultures uh, after that we prepared what we prepared a consortium of all these organisms now this bacillus cumulus it is found to produce vitamin b12 and the cumulin type of antibiotic also we mix this con consortium with what with the crud rice and locally available wild grain which become what which become the source of which worked as a prebiotic fermentation conditions were standardized then proteins b1 b2 b12 and folic acid were determined and gave the increased levels of above nutrients now this was a uh, dst sponsored project uh, titled as the fortification of tribal food for micronutrients by fermentation at guru nanak college of science ballarpur uh, which was conducted there uh, i was the principal investigator and then what conclusions we got after doing all this exercise it has given 79% increase in the observed in the riboflavin levels 37% increase in cyanocobalamin more than 100% in the niacin 59% it is observed in the folic acid content again in the thiamine content we get tremendous increase bacillus cumulus was responsible for elevation of cyanocobalamin levels bacillus cumulus also exhibited the antimicrobial activity against the common human pathogens such as what the staphylococcus aureus which causes the food poisoning and 36% increase was recorded in total protein content of the food so it become what it become a very positive result how the probiotic and how the symbiotic can play a miracle that you can see from this particular uh, example so <clears throat> we could increase a uh, vitamin level protein level also of these people and the process a complete process it has been given to the government also given to dst also for its implementation now <clears throat> can we use the probiotic as a cosmetical now this is again a very interesting thing what is cosmetical cosmeticals are the cosmetic products with bioactive ingredients purported to have medical benefits there are no legal requirements to prove that these products live up to their claims the name is combination of cosmetics and pharmaceuticals so what are they now these are what the certain functional foods which are used as the cosmeticals now you can see here these are the brands which are available <coughs> a chocolate it is used for the sn care then you can see this this is what this is the beauty case sensitive yogurt now this is used for applying to the face which gives what glow in the skin and then there are so many other products which are shown but this is what this is the sensitive yogurt which is used as what as a beauty product so now we prepared another thing another cosmetic apart from this we prepared a lactic hina lactic hina a coloring preparation which is developed with application of indigenously isolated probiotic cultures the product and the process are patented patent application is under process now this is what this is the uh, patent application number which is given and uh, now we will see the glimpses of this product what is this product this is what this is the lactic hina innovation in the traditional hina the hina is used for coloring of hair as you know as a natural dye it is prepared by traditional household methods we prepared ready to use pack with microbiological interventions and give new things we developed three colors black dark brown red orange the traditional hina gives only one color it gives a better conditioning of hair shine to hair there is no chemical keeping time it is 15 days we have also developed the economics of this process now 
I will show you the effect and actually testing on the subjects. Now this is what a dark brown, dark brown product, the lactic hina, how it gives. This is what, this is the application on the subject. Now you can see, this is without any conditioner. Without any conditioner, this is giving what such type of the effect. Then this is the black color. Now you can see here, this is the color which has been developed. So these are the trials which we have got. So it is a why it is happening. This is be, this is happening because the probiotic culture. Now why we are getting such type of the shine and all other things. This is because of the fact that the probiotic culture they produce what they produce the ceramides, they produce the spingolipids, which gives the better conditioning and better shine to the uh, hair. So this is what this is the probiotic thing again. It gives what it gives it, it removes what it removes the dandruff. This is because of what the acidic pH, the probiotic culture, they develop the acids and they develop certain other type of the bioactive compounds along with that the uh, Hina preparation. So this is what this is the uh, product which we have developed. The main point here is that it doesn't require any conditioning or any conditioner as such. So now the third, the preventive measure for COVID-19 like infections. At present, entire world, it is fighting against the pandemic uh, that is COVID-19. In India, all of you know, the first it was reported on uh, 30th of January. After that, the spread of infection started. At, <clears throat> at present in India, more than 24 lakh people are affected and more than 47,000 deaths are reported till death. Or, all over the world, <coughs> the COVID-19 positive cases are above 2 crores and deaths are above 7,25,000. Now we must know some points to note regarding the different aspects. Mode of transmission, aerosol and the close contact, target organ, lower respiratory tract, in, lower respiratory tract then target population, 85% people are above 65 uh, with impaired immunity and other complications like uh, cardiovascular diseases, 10% are children, 5 to 10% are between, uh, <clears throat> between 40 to 45, uh, 55 years with diabetes, <clears throat> uh, CVD and impaired immunity, few cases are with, uh, uh, few cases are of youth population. Now geographical distribution, mostly urban, highly populated cities. Diagnosis by RT-PCR, asymptomatic suspected cases by rapid antibody testing, prevention, physical, social distancing, prophylaxis. It gives uh, hydroxychloroquine limited for health worker and in SOS conditions due to side effects. Then treatment, no drug is available, only supportive treatment, active immunization, no vaccine till date, passive immunization, no antiserum, plasma therapy is under trial. In such condition, is there any way to protect population? Can nutritional factor play some role at least to inhibit the proliferation in host body and delay further spread till vaccination or drug develops? To answer this, we have to take a quick look at the infection process of COVID-19. Now, this is the half part. This half part, it is for SARS-CoV, which is the causative organism and this is the cell to enter inside the cell it needs what it needs a receptor that is the ace2 this ace2 receptor is the requiring so ace2 receptor bring this uh, virus inside the cell it releases its genome that is the rna viral rna it is released then it gives what it gives the <clears throat> Uh, different type of the protein synthesis it is going on the utilizes the ribosomes of the human cell itself and prepare the different protein it gives the replicates now all the proteins they are produced now these proteins they are going to the endoplasmic reticulum and all other thing the packaging take place then this is what the new progeny it goes outside so in this way once the cell burst because of large number of such type of the cell, such type of the virus, then there is a uh, spread of infection inside the body occur. 
it goes to lung it destroys the alveoli and so many other things happen what is the main thing the main thing is entry entry of the virus inside the cell which needs what which needs the ace2 now how we can inhibit the process now the main thing is what the ace2 so our aim is what do not allow to enter the organism that is the uh, sars cov virus inside what inside the cell so ace2 in ace2 production why this ace2 receptor develop on your cell that we must know ace2 production it is helped by renin enzyme so how renin is regulated that we must know so what is the regulation of renin now the blood pressure it is controlled by what by number of different interacting biochemical pathways typically the regulation of blood pressure has been associated with one system that is called as renin angiotensin system that is called as the ras which involves the angiotensin converting enzyme ace now ras regulates the blood pressure fluid and electrolyte balance also now renin is what renin is an acid proteinase generated from inactive pro <coughs> inactive precursor called as the prorenin by the action of what by action of another enzyme that is called as calcarin so calcarin act on the prorenin then prorenin it is converted into renin the important thing is that why this calcarin act on the prorenin it is because of the fact that it is released calcarin is released whenever there is a depletion of salt or whenever there is a stimulation of beta 2 type of the receptors by aldosterone type of the hormone aldosterone it is given only and only when there is a depletion of star salt so depletion of salt occur aldosterone it gives what it is stimulated it gives the it, it joins with the beta 2 receptors and then there is what there is a formation of calcarin so as the calcarin occurs calcarin hydrolyzes the prorenin and convert the prorenin to renin so in ras system what happen that is renin angiotensin system renin hydrolyzes the plasma angiotensinogen now this renin development it depend on what it depend on the electrolyte balance and what and the uh, fluid balance so whenever there is what there is a mismanagement because of what because of any type of what any type of the condition the salt imbalance is going on and the aldosterone get activated aldosterone get activated because of what because of the psychological pressures also and in that condition the calcarin it act calcarin act on what calcarin act on the renin pro renin pro renin converted so in the, in this condition renin hydrolyzes the plasma angiotensinogen now this angiotensinogen it is actually produced by the liver and then it is liberated it is liberating what angiotensin 1 this angiotensin 1 is inactive it doesn't make any difference angiotensin 1 it is acted upon by what it is acted, acted upon by the another enzyme that is called as the ace1 the angiotensin converting enzyme 1 which convert this angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2 angiotensin 2 is a potent vaso contractor it means what it, it contracts what it contract the vessel it contract the vessel because of that the blood pressure increases it also induces the aldosterone and therefore it increases the sodium concentration elevates the blood pressure ace also inactivates what the vasodilator that is bradykinin this bradykinin is present in our our system ace it gives what it gives the inactivation of bradykinin so angiotensin 2 it gives vaso contraction ace1 also give ace also gives what <clears throat> it also gives the destruction of bradykinin bradykinin so which is a vasodilator so vasodilator is not available now and only vaso contraction is going on now what will happen to counteract this there is necessity that the angiotensin 2 must be destroyed so as soon as the angiotensin 2 is formed 
our body gives the induction of what induction of one enzyme that is called as the ace2 that is the angiotensin converting enzyme 2 which hydrolyzes the angiotensin 2 and gives protection from cardiovascular disease but now what happen here the angiotensin converting enzyme 2 that is the ace2 is formed and now this ac2 act as a receptor for what the sars cov so by one way we are controlling what the cvd and by another way what what is happening we are allowing the entry of what entry of the coronavirus so this can be given in a flow diagram now you can see here this is what this is the this is the kidney kidney gives what it gives the formation of proreenin now the calcarin it is induced I have given you how, how this it is induced. It act on the proreenin, proreenin converted into the renin. Renin act on the angiotensinogen, which is produced from the liver. It is converted into the angiotensin one. It is inactive. Now angiotensin one, it is acted upon by the enzyme. This is the inducible enzyme, ACE, angiotensin converting enzyme one, which gives conversion of angiotensin one to angiotensin two. Then it gives what it gives the cardio vasoconstriction and then the CVD. Then this is what angiotensin 2, as soon as it forms, it induces what it induces the ACE2. This ACE2 acts as a receptor for what for the SARS CoV virus. Now, here what happened? The bioactive peptide from the probiotics they give what they give the inhibition of what the inhibition of ace1 so these bioactive peptides they give the inhibition of ace1 so when the pep, when the probiotic organism is there it gives what it gives the formation of such peptide ace1 is inhibited as the ace1 is inhibited there is no angiotensin 2 formation take place as the angiotensin 2 is not there ace2 is not produced so as the angiotensin 2 is not produced it it doesn't give any cardiovascular disease at the same time it doesn't give any production of ace2 so you are saved from both the type of condition that is the cvd as well as what sars cov2 so this is what this is the mechanism which the probiotic can play and you can inhibit what the multiplication of what multiplication of the further multiplication of the cov but you cannot kill the cov by this mechanism so even if the covid 19 virus come in your cell what will happen it will remain if it come inside your system it will not enter inside your cell but it will remain outside of your outside of your cell but it will remain in the system so you have to maintain the uh, maintain the level of what the bioactive peptides because of which the ace2 is not formed so this is what that's why this is this cannot be the treatment this can only be the prevention so the ac inhibition is the key clinical target the blood pressure control and also inhibits inhibiting the sars cov2 virus here the microbial activity or the probiotics can come to our help Hence, the fermentation is considered to be an effective way to produce bioactive peptides. These peptides are known to, inhib to be inhibitory to ACE1, which converts angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. As angiotensin 2 induces the ACE2, thus, due to absence of angiotensin 2, ACE2 will not be produced. And hence, in present scenario, the availability of such bioactive peptide will be useful in inhibition of what in inhibition of sars cov2 virus now here which probiotic culture produce such bioactive peptides the lactobacillus helveticus other probiotic bacteria such as bifidobacterium longum then acidophilus lactobacillus cassis lactobacillus rhamnosus etc they are known to produce such bioactive peptide against ace1 enzyme these peptides are the tripeptides containing what valin proline proline that is vpp then isoleucine proline proline from milk protein casein so these bacteria they work act on what the milk protein and produce these tripeptides which are the inhibitors of ace1 so as the ace1 is not produced is angiotensin 2 is not produced 
produced. Therefore, ACE2 cannot be produced. So this is what, in short, how the probiotic cultures can give protection in the infections like COVID-19. So how these bioactive peptides can be produced? This can be done by inoculating the skim milk with different probiotic culture. The peptides are fractionate, fractioned by different chromatographic methods. Different fractions are can be tested for their AC inhibitory activity by spectrophotometry, fluorometry, or even by full colorimetry. The fraction which shows AC1 inhibitory activity can be further purified and characterized. So this is what this is a very short way that how it can be produced. It is not so easy, but just for an idea I have given. Now what is the future in probiotics? Our current technological and methodological developments offer exciting possibilities for probiotics and prebiotic research and applications. The new tools allowing real-time studies in humans and following a microbe as it integrates into an existing microbiota as well as the systems that can quantify the levels of health will drive this field forward. Readouts on what microbes are present, their interaction with the host, and the influence of environmental factors such as drugs, nutrients, etc., will become standard when going for a physical examination in future. Novel sampling systems will elucidate how an applied probiotic and prebiotic interacts with the host at various levels, including the immune system, metabolism, all components of the microbiome. Ultimately, an integrative approach will support a form of personalized medicine to establish what to establish a dose response relationship for treatment but more so attempt to be aligned what enters your system how it is processed and which probiotic or prebiotic deliver the best desired effect the mechanistic insights into effector molecules will pave the way for emerging concept that is called as the postbiotics. So we are just talking only about the prebiotic, but we have to go for the postbiotic as such. As already as early career scientist, the budding scientist, we want to be a part of society that uses beneficial microbes to help solve the global problems, such as reducing the risk and impact of diseases, including virus and pandemics and removing drugs and toxin from our food and environment. These will be exciting times with many career paths open for probiotics and prebiotic research in the science and applied to many other disciplines. So what are the institutes which are engaged in the probiotic research in India? This is the CFTRI, Central Food Technological Research Institute, Mysore, National Dairy Research Institute, Karnal, Haryana, India, Institute of Microbial Technology, Chandigarh, NDRI, uh, sorry, National Dairy Development Board, Anand, Gujarat, Nestle Private Limited, Panipat, Haryana, as such. So, probiotics is a revolution. The revolution begins. It is a habit that can really benefit overall health. Taking by probiotics, be healthier, be <clears throat> happy. So, thank you for listening. Okay, sir. So, thank you so much, sir, uh, for giving us a useful information regarding probiotics, role in human health, and possible role in COVID 19. It is useful yeah. for all. We move for question answer session. Yeah. Our first question is uh, from our third year student. Parnish uh, uh. asks, how can we avoid flatulence caused by probiotics? Okay. Now, this flatulence, uh, it is a rare thing generally. It is not uh, too much of the fly. So, what we have to do? We should not take this in the excess. The excess taking, it will give what? It will give the flatulence. Now, flatulence may be because of what? Because of the acid, uh, for excessive acid production and the gassiness. 
so you can take the antacids in that but the probiotics also itself if it, it is a good type of probiotic it contains such type of the bioactive substance which will counteract with the acid also and it is a rare condition where we get what with the flatulence and the bloats one more question sir uh, yeah. how to probiotics after taking a hello hello i am audible sir hi uh, yes okay again how to probiotics uh. after taking antibiotic how to probiotics see probiotics generally uh, doctor also prescribe along with the antibiotic broad spectrum antibiotic when you take they give you the lactobacil okay lactobacil there is a uh, sachet which is available in the market it is a lactobacillus porogens uh, freeze dried culture when uh, when you take the antibiotic broad spectrum antibiotic after that you have to take what you have to take the one sachet of that lactobacil that is a probiotic culture and it will uh, help you hello ha ah, sir you are audible sir so uh, such sachets are available and doctor always prescribe uh, these uh, uh, preparations okay okay uh, uh, kn lengure madam asked ah. type of uh, probiotics with mood elevation or depression Huh? Probiotics can help with huh? mood or depression. See, uh, nowadays the probiotics it is also used to uh, overcome the depression. Hmm. It, it 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 is used uh, also to overcome the depression. It will keep your he mood healthy. nowadays the psychological effect or the effect of probiotic on psychological uh, condition it is also studied there is a literature that is available and uh, it will help in improving your psychological status hello yes yes sir you are audible sir yes so so it will uh, help in uh, maintaining your good uh, psychological status okay questions are also asked lengure ma'am how uh -huh. system mm hmm hello it's help yes sir uh -huh. uh, how it's system which system immune system sir ha ah, immune system immune yeah, system yeah. it yeah uh, immune system there is a mechanism uh, what is that mechanism it produce certain type of what certain uh, i have shown one diagram uh, in that uh, uh, probiotic culture produce certain metabolites that go inside what the epithelial lining of what our uh, intestine and there in the uh, mesenteric uh, node there are dendritic cells so it gives what it gives the induction of dendritic cells now those dendritic cells they start producing different type of the cellular response they also give they also activate the b cells thereby they produce what the uh, uh, iga particularly so iga production when it occur it gives a covering what it, it is a, it is called as a antibody pest it gives a covering on the epithelial lining because of that many more type of the pathogen even the amoeba uh, all they cannot enter inside what inside the epithelium apart from that the uh, probiotic culture they down regulate what they down regulate the production of ige antibodies the ige antibodies they are what they are more important in what in the uh, hypersensitive reaction 
when ig antibodies form they join with what they join with certain cells like mast cell and produce the uh, pharmacologically active substances and that causes the allergy so what happen the probiotic culture down regulate they inhibit what they inhibit the production of ig antibodies so ig antibodies as they are not available even though the sensitized mast cells are there they are not going to damage your system so in this way the immune system it is also uh, helpful okay then serum level serum igg level also increases sir one more question okay how old do children have to before taking probiotics uh, see uh, generally what we do uh, we start the food okay we yeah. we start the food uh, after 3 to 4 months after 1 year they can be given with the probiotic food hello hello ha ah, yeah sir okay sir uh, one question for, from my side uh, mm -hmm. how is the maturity of lactic acid in agar yes sir i am audible ha ah. uh how the activity of lactic acid bacteria uh, uh, in agar affected due to yes your why why is it not coming clearly okay, okay sir i am repeating again uh, uh, sir how is the metabolic activity of acid bacteria in agar uh, affected due to storage okay uh, see <clears throat> what happened uh this entire uh, system it works on what it works on the availability of nutrients okay probiotic and prebiotic is it clear after yeah, yeah. some time after some time what happened the prebiotic it is depleted okay prebiotic is depleted and then apart from that the temperature it uh, it also plays an important role it may down regulate what down regulate the activity of what activity of the lactic culture because of the over storage under what under the cold condition so because of that after some time there is always a expiry which is written on what on the yogurt pack after these many days uh, uh, during that particular duration only you have to consume that product the expiry is given on that so it is calculated that how for how much time it is live at what particular temperature it is determined okay sir thank you sir last question is i think adult hello hello ha i am audible sir uh tics help adult help how probiotics help adults 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 yeah, means yeah. adult uh, it will help the adult because by the same mechanisms okay. by same mechanisms it will uh, help okay sir thank you thank yeah. you sir now i would like to call yes nirali ma'am actually i i, I want to remove this slide how i can your slide is not visible now sir okay yeah but on my um, screen it is there still it is there okay okay but here uh, your slide is not visible sir so now i would like to call professor c s to give a vote of thanks so please ma'am thank you sir for giving me opportunity once again to grace the event okay i professor cs nirali on behalf uh. of kkv college of food technology nashik feel immensely blessed to extend hearty vote of thanks to our resource person dr sd patankar sir who spared his time from his busiest schedule to grace the occasion 
today we had an opportunity to hear your thoughts and this will be surely be going to encourage us in our future events your thoughts have enlightened our minds and have shown us a new path i am immensely thankful to honorable mr bala saheb wag chairman of kk wag education society honorable mr samik wag trustee of kk wag education society professor k s bandi sir secretary of kk wag education society who have provided us this platform to arrange such a wonderful webinar session a special thanks to our respected coordinator of kk wag agriculture and allied colleges saraswati nagar campus dr v m shavlikar sir and the principal of kk wag college of food technology professor ng dikshit sir for being the catalyst that stimulated us to do our best and standing the pillars of our strength i would also like to thank the people who work behind the scene to make the event happen our technical arrangement team and all the staff members of the college last but not least a big thank you to all dear students all the farmers all the participants who have attended this wonderful session of dr s d patankar sir i hand over my mic to host of the today's webinar thank you sir okay, okay thank you ma'am uh, with the permission of our principal and uh, you sir uh, i declare that today's webinar is over thank you so much sir okay thank you